Welcome, Jesus, Jesus Image Church. I just, man, I feel like we already need to lift up a shout of praise to the Lord, because he's risen. <laughs> oh, come on, just keep lifting your voice. He's risen, and he's alive, and he's in this room. Oh, come on, let's just lift our hands. Lord, we've come to give you something costly tonight. We've come to give our whole bodies as a sacrifice of praise tonight, Lord. I pray that we won't wait, that at, from the moment, Lord, that we start right now, that we will worship in spirit and in truth, Lord, and that you will come and you'll be so loved on tonight, Lord. So we just ask you to come, Lord. We know you're here, but come. Come in all your glory, Lord. We bless you tonight, Lord. You're so worthy. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for the price you pay, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for.
shadows deepen. We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We Is all creation groaning? It is. And is a new creation coming? It is. And is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this?
has found me just as I am, empty-handed but alive in your hand, singing majesty, Ooh, majesty, forevermore, forever.
Treasure of my heart and of my soul In my weakness you are merciful Redeemer of my past and present roles You're the holder of my future days to come I'll stand and sing this. Come on. Is to me. Oh, sing it again. Choir, just begin singing in the spirit. Come on, everyone. Everyone out there, just begin to sing in the spirit. Just forget about everything right now. And worship the Lord. And worship the Lord. And worship the Lord. And worship the Lord. Keep singing. Keep singing.
keep singing, keep singing, keep singing. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Wonderful Lord, manifest your presence here. Now's the time to close your eyes and love him. Just begin to pour your oil on him. Oh, Jesus, we love you. How we love you. How we love you. I closed. Come on. Seated on his throne. Yeah, come on, choir. He was clothed in glory. He was clothed in glory. Exalted high. Exalted high. Oh, the Lord's here now. And the train of his the temple fills the temple angels in the angel circle around me they cry 
Look at him right now. Seated. Seated on his throne. Oh, Jesus. Blessed are the pure in heart. Was clothed in glory. They shall see the Lord. And exalted I. Come and fill this room, Lord, with the train of your robe. And the train of his Join heaven now.
just begin to lift your voice to the Lord. Come on. Let the Holy Spirit use your body right now as an instrument to worship the Lord. There's one worship service, not one in heaven and another on earth. We gather around the same throne this evening. Keep singing. It's the same throne. There's one throne. There's one lamb in the midst of it. One throne. We join heaven tonight and adore the one who's seated, who's in the midst of the throne, the Lamb of God. Forget about everything now and worship the Lord. You're Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You're worthy. You are worthy to be praised. And we give you. We give you, we give you.
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Oh, the earth is filled with his glory. Mm, nowhere to go now. There's nowhere to go. Wonderful Lord. Welcome, welcome, Holy Spirit. Fix your eyes on Jesus right now. The author and finisher of our faith. Wonderful Lord. Who is like you? Who is like you? Who is like you? You can watch the river or get into the river. I would get in if I were you. Give the Lord your attention. There's nothing to do. There's nowhere to go. This is our home. This is our home as presence. Just look and live, look and live, look and live. Look at Jesus. Your beauty fill this room, Lord. Your beauty, the beautiful face of the one we love. This is where lives are changed forever, right here. Everything you need is right here. To be honest, you, you can ask if you'd like, but I wouldn't take more than a second to ask right now. This is where prayers are answered, in His presence. He is heaven's treasury. How we love you, Lord. Your bride loves you. The world does not love you. But we love you here. We love you. We love everything about you. There's so much we don't know about you. So much we don't understand, but we still love you. We love everything about you. Wonderful, Lord.
joy unspeakable, filled with glory. My peace I give to you. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is the kingdom of God. It's all in the Spirit. It's all in His presence. Trust us with more, Lord. Trust us with more. Trust us with more of your presence. Unveil yourself. Unveil yourself. Unveil yourself, Lord, here. at his feet and forget about them forget about them let him give you beauty for ashes right now You take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Don't change the channel. Nobody moving. Don't change the channel. Sit quietly. I'm telling you, I feel the presence of the Lord so strong. And in moments like this, distraction is the great enemy. So sit in the presence of God. Babe, may I have my Bible? My iPad? My iPad too, babe. Thanks, Steph. Close your eyes for a moment. Say, Lord, teach me to live here. I'm telling you right now, this is special. If you don't sense his presence right now, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. Speaking to one of my children today, I was talking to them and they were looking the other way. And I said, uh, would you look at me while I'm talking to you? <laughs> they said, Dad, I, I can hear you. I said, yeah, but I enjoy it when you look at me while I'm talking to you. 
I said, I'll talk to you if you look at me. So is the Lord. The Bible says that Moses turned to see the bush that was burning. In fact, first it says that he looked at the bush and turned to see. You can't see unless you're willing to at least look. And then the voice of the Lord came out of that fiery presence, the glory of the Lord. God wants us to look at him when he talks to us. And the Lord is going to speak to us now as you look at him. As I'm preaching, I'm going to take the next 10 minutes to speak to your soul. And while I'm speaking, I have this sense that you don't even need my altar call, but many of you are going to feel compelled to just come down and give everything to Jesus while I'm talking. I feel that. I feel the cords of love the magnetic pull of the Lord. He's irresistible. Who's like him? Who else makes you feel this way? Those of you at home, don't hesitate tonight in giving your life to Jesus. That wonderful presence you feel in your room, so different than the world, that's filled with fear and hatred and division and confusion. Now, everything just feels right in his glory. Don't resist the one who's filling your house right now with himself. That's his love. He's reaching out to you. I've talked to you about this before, but I felt to do it again. Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever sins is a slave to sin. Sins is a slave to sin. Sin is a slave master that you can be free from tonight, completely free. You see, most of the West comes to a prayer. But Jesus said, come unto me. And the Jesus I'm talking about is not afar off. He's in the room tonight. He's, he's right here. He said, if you would gather together in my name, two or three, I would be there even in the midst of you. This wonderful sense of God we feel is Jesus in the midst by the Holy Spirit. Tonight, you will not have the opportunity to reject my message or accept my message. Tonight, the opportunity is being presented to you to reject or accept Jesus, who is in the room. Right? You're going to have to walk past the one who has holes in his body today and choose the world. He's that close. Sin is a slave master. Sin sickens us. The Bible says a sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bone. Psalm 34 says this, Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. The Lord can reach into the depths of your being, which is your dead spirit, and make it true. When I kept silent, verse 3 says, my bones wasted away. When we refuse to confess our sin, it actually rots the bones physically. 
For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. Many of you in this room feel the wonderful but convicting weight of the Lord's hand on you. And you're going to have to try to run away tonight. I wouldn't. If you're like me, when I was 12 years old and walked into a meeting like this, I wondered, can I take you home with me, Lord? Can I take what's in this room and can we do this all the time? And I discovered that I could be with him all the time. Sin is no toy. It is certainly not an experiment. Jesus said, if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands and two feet and to be cast into the everlasting fire. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. These are extreme words. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye than to have two eyes and be cast into hellfire. So serious is sin that Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. He said, if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Friend, in all the love I can harness right now, I want to say this, sin will send you to hell. Sin doesn't give you a bad day. It gives you a horrific eternity. And the Bible says that God did not create hell for us, but for the devil and its angels and his angels. Sin deceives us. He Hebrews 3.13 says, But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Sin hardens us and deceives us to the degree that we don't think it's a big deal and we don't even think God can see it. Ultimately leads us down a path of becoming our own God as we begin to determine what is right, what is wrong, and ultimately tell God what He wants. Sin kills. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. For in the day you eat of that fruit, you shall surely die. Romans 6, 23. For the wage of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Please look me in the eye. Adam didn't die until he was over 900 years old, physically. But the moment he turned his affection from the presence of the Lord, and ate of that fruit, he died. It just took a while for his body to catch up. Jesus said to him, in the day you eat of this, you will die. It tells me something. You, you may be sitting in your seat tonight saying, I'm not dead, I'm right here. If you don't have Jesus, you're as dead as a doornail. You don't have to be. I guess my question to you tonight would be, what would you like to choose in place of the Lord? 
Do you feel safe in the world? Do you trust the world system? Do you trust what you read? Do you trust what you hear? Are you going to stake your life on politicians and governments who hate one another, who change like the wind? Do you realize entire armies and kingdoms and regimes have made this book enemy number one, yet this book is here today and those armies are in the grave? What? Do you have a better option, a better savior, a better religion? Every one of their leaders is decaying in the dust. The nations have conveniently not been able to find the body of the most famous human to ever grace the earth. This is no ordinary man. This is the God man. Sin is a stubborn stain. Come now, and let us reason together. Isaiah writes, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. <laughs> you can't remove that stain. I cannot remove my own sin. There, I cannot. There is no detergent that will get rid of it. There's no conference. There's no church. There's no ministry, no album, no record, no download, no streaming system that can remove this stain. No self-help seminar. You can't, you can't uh, declare it away. You can't think it away. You can't dream it away. You can't even prophesy your stain away. It's a stubborn stain. But I know of a crimson. That too is crimson. I know of a holy crimson substance. I feel the Lord. That is heaven's magnet. I know of a substance that the Holy Spirit loves to descend upon, for they bear witness of one another. I know of a substance that speaks a better word. I know of a substance that cries out today that is on the mercy seat of heaven. The substance is the blood of Jesus. that is more stubborn than the stain of sin. For once you've been marked, you are marked forever. The Bible says if every devil, if height and depth and every principality and everyone who hates you and every word of accusation appeared before the throne, Romans teaches us, and accuse the ones who are marked with the blood, God would never separate his love from us. The blood of Jesus. But we are all like an unclean thing, Isaiah writes again in Isaiah 64, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, friend. Life, you maybe perhaps think that this is just going to go on forever, but I never thought I'd be 43. I just feel like it was yesterday I was in high school. The 
We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. What is Isaiah saying? Life is short, and our own righteousness is a filthy rag in the eyes of God. Tonight, you have the choice that will determine your eternity. Absolutely, it is that clear and that serious and that wonderful. Jesus came to the earth, born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, a sinless life, not only for you, but as you, as your representative. He identified with you. He fulfilled the law on your behalf because you could not. He took all of your sin, past, present, and future, not just what you do, but every fallen thought. Jesus took the sin we commit when we do the right thing for the wrong reason. He took everything that wasn't true through act, deed, thought, and motive for every person in the history of the world, took it upon his body, fulfilled the law on their behalf, the law that no man could fulfill, and then nailed that sin to the tree when he became our sin. And when he died, the power of our sin died. And I'm not merely talking about the symptoms of your sin. I'm talking about your nature. That thing in you that resists God. That goes your own way. The scripture says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Do you want to know what astray is? It's found in the next line. We have gone our own way. The most astray you can go is to go your own way. If you go your own way, friend, hear me, hear me well, you go the devil's way. The devil loves our independence. But the children of the Lord are dependent. For it's in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. Tonight you have a choice to make. Perhaps never, ever again will you be in a room that is so charged with the glory of God. And God is reaching out to you wanting you how will you respond tonight with every head bowed and eye closed you say Michael I want to live the Christian life that I always dreamed about living I want to be free from sin I want to be completely made brand new I no longer want to be a slave God sees everything friend he sees it all and you can be free you can be completely free today and the stain of sin will be forever removed and replaced by the glorious stain of the blood of Jesus. You say, Michael, that's me. I want you to slip your hand up. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. I'd like everyone to stand. Everyone stand. If you raised your hand, listen carefully, or you wish you did. And by the way, if you brought someone tonight and you know they need Jesus, if you, as their friend, are wondering, I mean, you know them. You know what their life looks like. You know whether or not they're burning. I want you to look at them right now. Right now. Go ahead and do it. It's time the church steps out in boldness. Look at them right now. You didn't come, you didn't bring them to just enjoy some nice little Easter gathering. As you discovered, we're a little bizarre around here. I want you to look them in the eye and say, do you need to get down there? I'll go with you. If you raised your hand or you wish you did, children, listen carefully. If you're in the room and your heart, your heart is being moved and you're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want you to look at your parents right now and say, Mom and Dad, I want to give my life to Jesus. If you are any of those people, you raised your hand or you wish you did, I want you to get down here now. Come on, give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Come on. It's wonderful, Lord. Wonderful, Lord. You come close. You come close. Come on. This is beautiful. You come close. You come close. Thank you, Father. Come to the beautiful, beautiful Savior. 
still coming. They're still coming. Young and old, young and old, they're coming. Come, come give your life to the Lord. Come give your life to the Lord. God has not forgotten you. Listen to me. Those of you, keep blessing the Lord. Those of you who feel like you're too far gone, God has not forgotten you. You come to the Lord tonight. He will set you free. Every addict, every person addicted to porn, whatever it might be, you don't have to leave the same way. Come give your life to Jesus tonight. This is what he does. This is who he is. He sets the captive free. Thank you, Father. Come, they're coming. Come, give your life to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, come on, all of heaven rejoices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're still coming. You come, come close. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord. Thank you, Father. We are in no rush. We are in no rush. We are in no rush. They come straight up, fall on their knees. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Isn't he great? And greatly to be praised. We're going to begin praying right now. Everyone who's come forward, would you look me in the eye, please? Tonight, you're going to simply give your life to the Lord. I'm not asking you to bring God your perfection. There is no one perfect here but the Lord himself. You bring the Lord your filth, your stain. All he asks for is you. The Lord did tell us to count the cost, and this is the cost, everything. I can't tell you anything but what he said. He wants everything. So all of you who've come forward, are you willing to give Jesus everything? Can you acknowledge that? Yes or no? Are you willing to give the Lord everything? As you give the Lord your life, the Lord will wipe away every sin forever and never remind you of it again. Never, never, not one time. Well, he said, you remember what you did back in 2020? It's gone. The Bible says it will be removed and separated as far as east is from the west. Are you ready to receive him? Church, are we going to stand with them now? I want us all to pray this. I want our church to lift their hand, or to stretch their hands, I should say, toward them. In our hearts, this is the posture of our hearts. Are you ready? That they will live a victorious Christian life. Never a day away from the Lord. For those of you who've come forward, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Just offering your life to Jesus. And we're going to pray this out loud with clarity and boldness. We believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. Are you ready? Are you ready, church? Isn't this wonderful? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight having sinned against you. I confess my sin. Forgive my sin. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Jesus, I believe that you came to the earth and lived a perfect life. But you suffered and died on that precious cross. That you were buried and raised from the dead three days later. You are the Son of God, God Almighty, the Savior of my soul. Jesus, I believe that you ascended to the right hand of the Father and that you are returning again to rule and reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. Receive my life. There we go now. This is this precious moment. Say, Jesus, 
take my life as I receive your life. Come and live in my heart. I repent. I turn from the world. I renounce Satan. And I renounce my own will. I hand my life to you. Me for you. You for me. Come and live in my heart. I am a child of God. I am born again. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, God. No, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you've come forward, would you stand, please? Would you stand? Isn't the Lord wonderful? You should feel brand new because you are. You are brand new. If you've come forward, just look at me just for a moment. I want you to read your Bible every day. Every day. This book is more than a book. This is the heart of God in print. And it is true food. It is living bread. Read your Bible every day. Number two, spend time in prayer every day. That's what Jesus said. If you don't know how to pray, we'll do our best to help you. But ultimately, the Holy Spirit teaches you to pray. Jesus said, go into your room, close the door. Pray to your Father who's in secret. And your Father who dwells in secret will reward you openly. It's that simple. You begin to spend time in secret with Him. You shut the door, talk to the Lord, ask Him questions about what you're reading. And He will reward you openly. We call that the abiding life, John 15. Thirdly, you need to get baptized in water. We're good at that here. <laughs> ben and I have a lot of fun with that one. This is a great atmosphere to be baptized in water in. The waters are charged with the presence of God. Baptism is not an outward, merely an outward symbol. Nothing in the new covenant is a mere symbol. That would be religion. Baptism is charged with the presence and glory of the Lord, and that old man dies in that watery grave. And you come out, you come out charged, beaming with the Holy Spirit. Fourthly, listen, you need to give your life to the Lord with the people. It's called church. Find people that love Jesus more than you. They're out there, I promise you. Find them, find them. Begin to live your life around the presence and in the presence of God with them. That's called church. We would love for you to come to church here. If you don't feel led to come here, find a church that loves God's presence. Listen carefully. God's presence is God. It is God the Holy Spirit on earth. All right. Lastly, find a church that loves the Bible. Okay? The whole Bible. Genesis to Revelation. Find a pastor who gladly believes that Jonah was swallowed by the whale. Yes. Find that guy. Okay? Find that guy. Find a pastor who would believe that Jonah swallowed the whale if the scripture said that. That's the kind of pastor you want to find who loves the Word of God. Okay? Last but not least, I know I said that on the last one. Ask the Lord to empower you with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray that right now. We call this the wonderful baptism of the Spirit. Stretch your hands, church. Would you do that? If you've come forward, just lift your hands. And I'm going to pray that the Lord would meet you. Maybe right now. Maybe at home. I don't know, but it's happened to hundreds in this room. My job is to agree. Jesus said, ask. Ask your Father. And He will gladly give you the Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you have promised the Holy Spirit to those that believe. In Jesus' name, let these people be clothed with the power of the Spirit to lead others to Jesus by the millions. By the millions, I said. By the millions. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John Reed, would you come here real quick?
All of you who came forward, this is John Reed. John Reed leads the New Believers booth. I want you to find him after service. Everyone, everyone who came forward, right outside that exit door, John will be waiting for you and he'll make sure you're equipped uh, with all you need to do what we just talked about. Okay? All right. Can we welcome them home and welcome them to the kingdom? Love you. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. We're going to give to the Lord tonight in His presence, and I, we are happy about that. If you run out to the bathroom, we will send our ushers to the urinal like my father-in-law used to do to us growing up. We will find you. The Jesus people are a generous people. I don't like that chintzy demon. The chintzy demon. And stingy. Let's welcome Raul. Raul's going to receive tonight's offering. Proper stewardship is, it's, it's always followed by increase. It's a biblical principle. As, as we were in worship today, I, I couldn't, it's like the Lord kept impressing on my heart, I knew I was going to do this, that there's, that there's people here, maybe it's just one person, I don't know, but there are people here who believe that the Lord's, the Lord's put lack in your life to teach you lessons. And I just, I wanted to take a, just a couple minutes to really knock that thing out because, I mean, how many of you here are parents? Okay, I think it's safe to assume that none of you have ever put your children in a house and lit it on fire. And when they got burnt, you said, see, that's why you don't play with fire, right? No one's ever done that. You never taught your, less, you never taught your children a lesson by throwing them into a mess and wait until they get hurt, right? Usually what happens is you find kids playing with matches, they get hurt, and you explain then why it's not a good idea, right? It's... It's very similar when it comes to, when it comes to finances and, and generosity and tithing in the kingdom is that you may have bought into this lie that you were, the Lord's put you in a place of poverty or, or lack to teach you lessons, life lessons constantly. And you, you've literally maybe even accepted a reality that's far less greater than what Jesus paid a price for. Proper stewardship is always followed by increase. Your breakthrough may be, you, or I'll say it this way. You may think that, oh, when the Lord starts blessing me or giving, giving more to me or I have more of an opportunity to give, then I'll, then I'll be able to go above and beyond or tithe or whatever it is. And Oh, man, you can get stuck in that place for a really long time. Because the Lord, isn't, the Lord isn't mean and trying to teach you a lesson through poverty. He's waiting on, on your response to his word. I said it, la I said it a few weeks ago is that if, if we need to teach you to tithe, that's a bummer because tithing is not generosity, it's obedience. In Proverbs 3, it says, it says, honor the Lord. It's uh, 3.9. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow 
with new wine. That's not trying to tell you that God will only bless you if you give. That's to say that the blessing is found in, in the giving. And it comes back to what I said at first is that Prophet's proper stewardship is always followed by increase. Does that make sense? So if, if, that, if that makes sense in your heart, um, I, would just, I would just suggest that you take a step of faith today and, and declare it maybe in just in your heart and your mind and um, let the Lord know that you repent of that and that today is going to be, you're taking a first step. Because it's kingdom principle. I was uh, in my second year of ministry school. That I'll, I'll be really short. In my second year of ministry school, I I was studying the scriptures and I was going through Luke. And in Luke, I think it's six thirty or somewhere around there. It says, "It says, give to everyone who asks of you," and it, that just period. It's just that one sentence it says, "Give to anyone who asks of you," and it it stirred my heart and I I pondered upon it for for a long time and. About a week later, I went to a grocery store, and this, this man was outside. And um, I haven't shared this story here, right? I shared it at school. Okay. Um, and so I went to the grocery store, and this man walks up, and he says, Hey, can you give me five bucks? I'm trying to make it down to, uh, down to San Diego. And I was in Redding, California. And I was taught growing up, like, hey, be careful. Don't give to you know, homeless people. They might use it for bad things or whatever. And so, but... At the moment he asked, it was like there was a check in my heart where the scripture almost flashed right above him that said, give to everyone who asks. And I was like, okay, man, I don't have any cash on me, but I'll quickly run inside and I'll get cash back and I'll come back out. And so I went in, came out with like 20 bucks or something, and I handed it to him and I said, I said, hey, man, I just want to let you know how much God loves you and that he has a plan and purpose for your life. And this man started weeping and he starts pulling out his wallet and I'm, Actually, I didn't know what he was pulling out at the moment. I was, but he pulled out his wallet. All that to say, all that to say, again, it's just another example of proper stewardship is always followed by increase. Whether it's financial or someone's life has changed or it might in some other area of your life. But we must be an obedient people, an obedient church, an obedient body and bride, because if we want to reflect the nature of Jesus, it's, there's no other way. Does that make sense? All right. I love you guys dearly. Um, we are going to give. You can text the number on your screen. I believe we're going to have buckets up here. Yeah, let's bring um, those buckets up. That's a powerful role. Wow. Let's, yeah. So good. Yeah. Love you so guys. Good. Wow. Yeah, if you're watching online, thank you, Raul. So powerful. If you're watching online, you can text that Number on your screen, by the way, Carla, where, where do we stand on, uh, on Good Friday's budget? God is good. We only, uh, on, on Friday night, we brought in thir 33. We needed 85, and we're already at 60 in the last two days. People are giving. And I, I, I believe in faith. I told our team this. They were like, man, we didn't even come close to covering budget. I said, God knows how to cover his budget. God knows what he's doing. So if you feel in your heart to do something extra tonight, for those of you watching, we saw so many people saved Good Friday. I believe it did something in our city. And I believe these, mo these meetings are doing so much more than what we can see. So I'm going to ask you to give as well. Let's do something a little extra tonight. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your goodness. We give because we love you. And I pray a blessing over your people. Bless them and keep them so that Jesus' name would rip through the nations and that we would see a massive harvest of souls. The glory of the Lord would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can come. You can give in the buckets. Text to give. God bless you. Let's welcome the choir as they minister to the Lord.
we love you thank you so much choir we love you thank you for working so hard tonight who would you rather sing to for so long there's nobody like Jesus can we let the choir know how grateful we are thank Pastor Wally you guys can be seated we're going to receive communion and um, don't you love the Lord how many of you need your communion elements you do not have any Okay, we've got a bunch here. So ushers, if you could help, please. Uh, babe, would you give me mine as well? Ben, I'm going to have you come up if you don't mind. That's great. Thank you so much. Make sure you get yours, though. We have, um, yeah, you'll, you'll need a mic, bud. You good? It's so glorious. It's wonderful. Ben said it's so glorious in here. It is wonderfully glorious in here. I just want to say, you know, when uh, I used to dream about the Lord doing something here in Orlando where uh, people would come and 
really champions of the faith would come and you know following the Lord where there is this element where we're soldiers and you do acquire some battle scars in this thing gladly gladly our scars down here are trophies in heaven amen and I used to think Lord do something so wonderful so beautiful so life-giving that champions would come and, and just be in the presence of God. And it was a secret little desire that Jesse and I had. I, when I was living in Reading, I'd see Heidi there in the third row on Easter or other, you know, other people just there drinking and not coming to preach or just to be in the presence of God. And um, it's really an honor to have Ben here. I love you. Ben is basically a Floridian now. <laughs> He's got his Florida t-shirt. Ben, your next step is a Donald Duck t-shirt or something. Uh, yeah. Ben got here for Jesus 20, and it's almost summertime. <laughs> he hasn't left. But really, um, it's been a wonderful joy, and Steph and Steven are here. I love you guys so much. Would you guys just stand, please? Love you guys so much. So, so good. And, and uh, I can't see super well, but I think, jo yeah, there's Joshua and Janet. Thank you for being here. Love you guys. It's an honor to have you here. Truly is an honor. It's a privilege. And um, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. And so I'm going to pray over the body and then we're going to pray over your bodies and the Lord is going to heal many of you. How many of you came here tonight from outside the city of Orlando? Oh my gosh. Would you just wave? I'm just trying to get an idea. Huh. I'm sorry it was so cold on Good Friday. <laughs> All of y'all came down. I have friends who came down from Chicago and they got to Good Friday and they said, this feels like Chicago. <laughs> Tonight, think of this. We all as a family come together to the same table. This wonderful spiritual table. And Jesus, in so many ways, made it so simple in that he chose bread to be one of the elements in the Lord's Supper. Bread is a common meal in every nation of the world. Even those of you on keto, you know you like bread. <laughs> bread is blessed. It's true. And though the bread, listen carefully, though the bread is torn and distributed, tonight we'll break bread, Christ is never divided. This is amazing. Though we receive the bread and literally consume the presence of the Lord, Christ is never fully consumed. He is, lim is limitless. Psalm 23, and, and, and let me also say this, it's, it's my opinion that one of the reasons the church is so physically sick, I should say two reasons would be this. One, the church does not receive enough communion. And two, the church receives it improperly. Paul wrote to not discern the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. He said this, that many are sick among you and have even fallen asleep. In other words, passed away early. It's interesting to me that at the Last Supper, Satan entered Judas after he received the meal improperly with the wrong heart. So here's the question. If this is a mere symbol, how can you get sick and die from it if you take it improperly? Another question is this. If I take it properly, what happens? If taking it improperly brings sickness and death, 
receiving the meal of the Lord properly brings healing and life. Your sickness will be removed tonight through the power of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Psalm 23, the psalmist writes this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It's legal to pray that. All of us here can pray that. It's totally legal. It's fine. But there's only one who walked through the valley of the shadow of death and came out the other end. His name is Jesus. The same Jesus in the psalm says this, You prepare a table before me, listen to this, in the presence of my enemies. That was very literal in that one of his enemies was seated at the table and the entire city had become an enemy to Jesus for the most part. The same ones he healed in Galilee are the same ones who cried crucify him when he was naked carrying his cross. But Jesus found the beauty, listen, of the meal of the covenant in the midst of a city filled with enemies. This is what I want, to, I want to encourage you to do tonight. Forget about your enemies and receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Become more conscious of the Lord than the enemy. This precious meal will unlock the power of the covenant. Did you hear what I just said? This meal is heaven's key. It unlocks the power of what Jesus purchased. As my father-in-law said a few weeks back, that the, the meals give us what the covenant carries. And so tonight we come as a family and we come to the table of the Lord. Let me read you this scripture. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And this is Luke 22, 14 and 15. Then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Imagine this. Here Jesus is about to die, yet he has one thing on his mind, the table of the Lord. Regardless of what we're going through tonight, and all of us have things that we would like to see removed, one thing should be on our mind right now, fellowship with Jesus. He is the cure-all. The Lord Jesus fervently desires to have this meal with us, and I'd like to remind you that Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, is as present in this room as he was in the upper room when he received the meal with his disciples. In fact, the disciples denied him when he was with them in the flesh. But when the Spirit came, they died for him. He was actually more real to their hearts when the Spirit filled them when they were born again. Church. Never forget this. We are having a meal with God right now. Father, cleanse our souls. Forgive us. We give you access tonight to shine the light of the Spirit upon the depths of our being. And we confess. You said if we would confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we confess today that we have failed you many times. Wash us tonight. Now, Lord, we lift, we lift the precious bread, the living bread, the body of the Lord Jesus. We lift it high because his body was nailed to the tree and lifted high. Precious Lord, you took the bread and you broke it. And we all break it together now. Lord, I pray that as we receive your body, wonderful Holy Spirit, that you would begin to move and heal every sickness, all brokenness, as we experience this wonderful privilege of union with you. You said that we were to eat of this bread 
You said, this is my body that is broken for you so that our bodies would be mended. Tonight we receive by faith the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive in faith. Let the power of the Spirit go through your people. Heal them. A the wonderful Savior. The Bible says when they ate of the lamb, speaking of the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, there were none feeble. Three million people. Not only were they not sick, they were not weak. There was not a weak 90-year-old in Israel that night. Let the power of the body of Jesus fill your body right now. Ben, do you want to lead us in the cup? Yes. Thank you for the blood. Yes, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Just as I speak to you about the blood, just stay with your heart upon Jesus. You know, the Lord said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And the joy of the Lord, pleasing the Father, presenting his blood upon the very mercy seat of heaven. That joy was because of that blood, you would be his. You could be a child of God. Your nature would be changed. Your blood would be cleansed by his. You would bleed the love that he bled for you. Out of your innermost being would come a river of living water because his blood made the cleansing provision for you to be holy enough for the very Holy Spirit to live in you. Amen. Isn't his blood wonderful? Yes. That's why we sing about how wonderful it is. Oh, precious is the flow that makes us white as snow. Sin left a crimson stain, but he washed us yes. white as snow. When Jesus said he desired to do this fervently with you, he really meant that he wanted to be in intimate friendship and a moment between you and him around the sacrifice of what he would do. Isn't that crazy? Jesus didn't just want a moment around like a joyful meal for him to be satisfied in his stomach. He was gathering around the sacrifice he would make for you. And he said, I'm joyfully making this sacrifice wow. and I want to joyfully meet you every time again so you remember yourself to me. Mm -hmm. Become one with me in spirit. That's right. Become my lover. Let my blood wash you and wash clean all the things of the world that affects your mind, the distractions and the subtleties of this life. Thank you. Remember my great love for you. I fervently Thank you. desire Thank you, Jesus. to sit here with you and as you take my blood to pour and shed abroad in your heart again, my very love, my very life. And in the blood is the forgiveness of all sin. That's right. It's a redemption from all darkness and the deliverance from all torment. If your heart is cold, I can tell you right now, the blood of Jesus will warm you like nothing else. <laughs> it's so true. So as you take his blood, think of him on the cross. But think of him on the cross with a smile on his face. Looking at you, I joyfully did this so I could have you. And God has no regrets about the cross that he took for your life because by it he gained you. So we present to you, great King, the blood sacrifice by which you laid down the remission of sin that was needed. You laid down this blood for us to be free of sin and for us to be holy. And we thank you, Jesus, your blood is holy. And as we remember ourselves to you again, we unite our heart and our spirit with the sacrifice that you did Amen, Lord. And we give you all the glory for it. And we ask you, Jesus, that you would come into the deepest caverns of our heart and be our Lord and friend. I want you to say this. Thank you, King Jesus. Thank you, King Jesus. For your precious blood. For your precious blood. I give you my heart. I give you my heart. For all of my days. For all of my days.
drink it with him. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, once you've yes. received, I just want you to lift your hands. Just wait there on the Lord. Just give your mere attention. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. If you're sick in your body, Miss Kuhlman used to say, if your body needs a healing, give the Lord your body. Just give him your body. Say, Jesus, here's my weak body. Thank you for healing me. Just offer him your body. He says, I know your frame. I know your butt dust. I, I know what to do. Hallelujah. 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 Right there in his presence, give the Lord all of your attention and when you feel your body when you feel a change in your body i just want you to begin waving at me just try to do something you couldn't do that's the that's the key that unlocks you've got to you've got to step out if you have to stand up if you have to get out into the into the aisle you have to bend over whatever you need to do to move i want you to do something you could not do and once you feel like the lord has touched you i want you to just begin waving just begin waving at me. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your healing, wonderful power here. The Lord is touching somebody's right arm, your right arm. Receive that. Receive that. It's somewhere here on the right side. Wave at me if the Lord has begun touching you. You feel a difference in your body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. If you need a miracle, I just want you to lift your hand to the Lord right now. Lift your hand. If you're sitting next to that person, I want you to, if they're okay with it, I want you to put your hand there on their shoulder. Put your hand there. And I just want you to quickly ask them what's wrong. I don't want a long conversation. I just want you to quickly say, what do you need? What is wrong? Get the name of it. And in just a moment, you're going to very simply tell it to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right, are you ready to pray? We don't have to work for this. There is nothing left to prove. The Lord has done it all. Put your hand there on them, close your eyes, and you name that thing and tell it to go right here in the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, everybody who's not praying, I want you to turn and if, ra raise your hand very quickly if you need a healing. I want them to see you. I want the whole church. I want everyone to at least have a hand stretched out towards somebody in faith. We have people there on the balcony. So if you're down here in the back part of the floor, just turn your hand. And I want you to just lock in here in faith. Let's pray. Come on, everybody's in on this. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we declare the power of the stripes of Jesus, that by his stripes you are healed. By the stripes of Jesus. Now name that thing and rebuke it. Name it. Come on. If it's arthritis, tell it to go. If it's... Uh, emotional issues, like a, a bipolar, whatever that is, you tell that thing to go. In the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, go now. Go now. Go now. There's somebody right here who feels, you feel fire in your belly. You've had a, 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 an issue down here in the abdomen, just below the navel. I'm telling you, you feel something stirring in you, even right now. Go now in Jesus' name every infirmity, every affliction. Go, go. You have no chance of staying in the presence of the Lord. Leave now. Leave, leave every sickness, arthritis, back pain, glaucoma, uh, uh, hearing issues. Ears open now in Jesus' name. Open now. 
Open now in the name of Jesus. Open now in the name of Jesus. Behold. 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 Now, if you receive prayer, I want you to try to do something you couldn't do. Don't look for your sickness. You look for your healing by faith. And don't think. Do not think. In the time it takes to think, doubt can set in. Just move by faith. Move by faith. Try to do something you could not do. Hallelujah. 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 If you feel the Lord has touched your body or healed your body, I want to know. I want you to lift your hand. Yep, we've got one here. Come, uh, Ryan, grab the mic. Grab the mic. They're going to start flowing now. Got one there, there in the back. There, right there. Okay, Ryan, go to Dion quick. Go to Dion quick. Go to Dion quick. What's going on, Dion? Um, I had uh, joint pain in my thumb for, for a long couple months now. Uh -huh. I couldn't grip stuff and put pressure on my thumb, and uh, now I can. What happened? Who prayed for you? Jones? Um, Mike Jones and um, Jared. Come on, give the Lord praise. <laughs> Who else? Who else? I want you to... You continue checking, continue checking in this, in this atmosphere. Continue checking. Who else? There was another, yeah, here we go right here. Right, run, 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 Ryan. Look how great your hair looks when you run. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. What happened? Hey. Hi. Hi. Um, what happened? I, I couldn't close my hand, and I've had pain um, for the last six months in my hand, and it completely lifted, and now when? I can grip. When did that happen? Um, when you asked someone to pray. Who prayed for you? Shannon. Come on, guys, give the Lord praise. This is wonderful. I'm telling you, I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. I feel that wonderful healing river. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Yep, there they, they're starting to crack off now. Go over there. Oh, you got one there. That's a good problem. Go ahead. Um, I have tendinitis in my uh -huh. left foot. Uh -huh. And I've had tendinitis for the past year. And um, I've been What happened tonight? Up. Oh, um, this, my, my, friend, my new friend, she prayed for me, and she prayed for my foot and my feet. And what happened? They, my feet feel better. How my much better? Feels better? It feels better, like, I, because I, I couldn't. Is there any pain left? No, I don't have any pain in my foot. Was, was it, well, was it, was it during communion, or? No, it was when she prayed. It was right when she prayed. Right, right, right Come on, prayed. give the Lord praise. Ryan, we've got a couple over here. You know, Ryan always goes and finds the healings, and all that's going to do is just get on Ryan. That's how it works. What, ha what happened? So there was a few things I forgot I had pain with, but I had pain in my finger, and uh -huh. I was just bending it while he was first praying. Uh -huh. And then another thing we're going to find out next week is there's flu there was fluid around my heart, and I was hospitalized last year, and I haven't taken my medicine for days, and now I feel the confirmation that what, I can what, let what it go. What did you feel in your hand? What happened in your hand? The what hand did you is just fine. It, it was just pain on the finger. And did, did somebody pray for you? Yes, these two. These two right there? Yes. Good job. So. Good job. Come on. Who else? Anyone else here in this section? Anyone else? Isn't this wonderful? Oh. Um, Hi. I've had a blister on my toe, and before when I touched it, it really hurt a lot. Yeah. And I touched it, it didn't hurt at all. <laughs> I, I remember you. I remember that little girl. Well, let's make life a little easier on Ryan. Is there anyone else here in this, in this section? It feels... The Lord healed them. No, Ryan, let's get it moving. There were others. There we got two up front. Let's go. Careful though, Ryan. Hope the Pope, you're running with an expensive camera. <laughs> you better hold it tight. Okay. <laughs> what happened? Um, a few weeks ago, I was... How old are you? Twelve. Wow, so beautiful. Tell I us was, what happened. I was playing with my friends outside, and I felt something in my back, and it hurt for a while. And when you said something about the back, I stretched, and I couldn't feel it anymore. Thank you, Father. <laughs> See the little guy? He started. Is that your brother there on the end? Yeah, he's enjoying this. She's like, yeah, I know, I know. I love that the Lord's healing the kids. What's, what's going on there? I'm so sorry, but I, I even scared to 
shit. I have a problem with my stomach. Okay. 2015, I was fight for cancer, stomach cancer. And I'm a cancer survivor, but I, wow. my stomach is very little. Okay. It's a 25% only. And yesterday, my daughter-in-law, she made the bread, fresh bread. And I knew it. I couldn't eat it because I'm going to have a problem. And I did. I have such a pain all night, today, all day. When you say stomach, I start to feel like it's fire goes. I don't have a pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from here, but originally I'm from Russia. From Russia. Raul is Russian. The gentleman who took the offering. Thank you, Lord. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Would you sit down for a second? I want to pray over you. Let's stretch our hands. What's your name? Natasha. Your name? Natasha. What's your name, Ryan? Natasha. Natasha. Come on, everyone stretch their hand. Father, thank you for Natasha. Holy Spirit, fill her now with your wonderful presence. Thank you for what you've done in her tonight. Seal it. Seal it in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for a long, fruitful, wonderful, abundant life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Wonderful, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Who else? Who else? You see, when we share testimonies, it tells the Lord that we value what He's doing and He gives more. What, what else do you have, Ryan? Hi. What's your, what's your name? Eileen. Where are you from? Venezuela, but I live in Kissimmee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you asked. Um, I love the way you said that. What did you say? I said you asked. So I said, oh, I love it. It was wonderful. What, what, what um, happened? When I came here, I didn't have a voice. I wasn't even going to come. I've been in my house for two days with my throat swollen. Uh -huh. And I talk a lot. <laughs> and everybody's no. like, no. Nah. I, I would have never discerned that. No. Nah. Go, 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 go ahead. I'm a, go bit, ahead. I'm a bit shy. Um, so they, were, they weren't going to bring me. And I told them I can't talk. So when it came in and the presence was so strong, and I told my sister. And I go, I don't care. I'm just going to scream and sing all I have. And as you can see, my voice is clear. They pray for me, and I'm in victory. Whoa. Whoa. You know, you know what? I'm, I'm going to just encourage all of you. And, and let me just say this to our worship team, every one of you, and, and our media team, and everybody who runs the audio, and every volunteer. But I want to really target the worship team. You guys work harder than any worship team I know. And, and people are walking into a wall of presence when they come through the doors. When Ben walked in, he walked in, he goes, dude, I come in and it's like you're stepping into another world. Now this goes beyond the team. This is who we are as a people. All of you, you need to understand something. Every time you authentically tell Jesus who he is in this atmosphere, you're literally building him a house. And so people come in and I actually walk past you. What was your name again? Eileen, when I walked past her, I saw her worshiping because I had to go into the back for a moment. And I saw her worshiping Jesus. And she said, you said that right when you walked in. You felt the presence of God. It's the Lord who heals us. Not because we're phenomenal or full of faith. It's because he loves us. It's because he loves us. Give the Lord praise. I want to take a few more. Yes, thank you, Bob. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? There we go. What's your name? Uh, my name's Chris. Where are you from? From here. Where's that? Uh, Oviedo. I'm joking. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I, I had a lot of upper back stiffness. It's been really bad. Like I can't what was sleep. That? Upper back stiffness and yeah. neck pain. And uh, these guys laid hands on me and I felt a heat on my back. And I f just feel relaxed right Which now. Which guys? Did you know them? I know Nathan. <laughs> no, Nathan. Yeah. 
And so they prayed for you. You felt the power of God. Go yeah, through. I feel like I can breathe again and, and just feel like my neck is just loose. Come on, feels good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Let's take some more. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, we've got one there. Ryan, go. Isn't every healing wonderful? Yes. She's right there in the back. Ryan, you're going to be so shredded. Go ahead. Hi, what's your name? Christine. Where are you from? Here, Orlando. Here. Yes. What happened tonight? My feet, I've had problems for probably about a year with them. They. What happened to them? Um, they, they got, they just don't feel very well. I okay. mean, they would ache if, uh, the, the joints inflammation mm -hmm. and I've been really good, not eating anything bad for a few months and they still would flare up. But this lady here and, and these three here, do you know them? For, no, no, I do now, <laughs> I love <it> when <laughs> but they prayed for me and there's even after standing on them, they're fine. They're Wait, fine. So hold, hold on real quick. How long has it been since you felt I, this way? I have had this probably for about two or three years now. And it would, I never talk about it. I just, I, I never, ever let it hinder my worship. I will dance and whatever. But I do, there, I, I have was pain. It a, was it a constant pain? Intermittent, but tonight it was constant. It was, it was, it was so there. So the moment they prayed. When they prayed, and because I move it around, and I, when I sit, I move them around all the time, uh -huh. but it's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. Thank you, Father. <laughs> yeah, go. Go ahead. I think that is the fifth testimony tonight of healings of feet and hands. I think we should just before we get to the next testimony. Have you got the same testimony? For like over eight years. Wait, say that again? Over eight years, I had no feeling in my right hand. Okay. Everybody that was talking about their hand, I was like, Lord, wait, mind that because you look slow with me, right? So after everybody got theirs first, because I am a gentleman, and then my shoulder started, you know, my shoulder started getting loose. My neck was hurting me. I've been in a car accident over six weeks. I had whiplash. I got a concussion. I had one because uh, I couldn't even go down the road without pulling over to the gas station. I was 7 o'clock in the evening, waking up 2.30 in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning. And then when I was, I was walking good yesterday, couldn't put my shoes on, wow. feet swelled up. The lady, uh, Mrs. Leonda, she told me to come. And what was she? Did come? Leonda. Leon, Leonda. Uh, oh, Leonda. yeah. But what took me two. about it, when she told me to come, and uh, she said, you're coming to church? I told her, don't, don't do that to me. I'm coming anyway. What's wrong with you? You came to give your heart to Jesus tonight, too. But I had a, that's a redo. <laughs> well, wh whatever it is. Whatever it is. Yeah, you know, I want to be refreshed. Yeah. I was heavy in my spirit, tired and wore out. Come on. I haven't, I haven't ran and played football in six years. I couldn't walk good. I was on the wheelchair three times last year. Wow. I had a three sets of uh, crutches. I brung them. I laid them back there. I got tired of them. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, the spirit... That comes against me because I'm a doer. And for 52 years with Christ, my mother had was in her stomach and it was, I was crying. So as I was trying to see her baby's dying, my mother said, no, he ain't. Don't play with me. My mother ain't but 5'2". The lady to God, but she told me, she said, Don't when she saw me. it come out, she said, they gave her the anesthesia. The first thing came was my head. My right fist came out like this. And she said, when she saw my shoulders, she passed out. But that load <laughs> I've been carrying is to carry other people's loads so the enemy fights me harder. I took care of my family for years and decades. I got a sister who hates me so bad. She hate God for blessing me. She wanted everything I got and everything I had tied up. He stripped well, me. Well, what happened to your foot or your hand? I, I, had, I got neuropathy and um, I got my navel. Uh, I had a hernia. Still oh, wow. there. Okay. And went back where it belongs at. What did the Lord do tonight? Man, the guy had stress on me like nobody's business. I was burdened down, heavy in my spirit. I feel like I weighed 350 and I'm only 290. And then I like, now I feel like I weigh 190. And because um, this is, I'm, I'm getting free here. And I miss how I feel. They free the Hebrew slave, right? <laughs> what happened to your hand? I want to hear what happened. My, oh, my grip back. I got my grip back. So how long, how long has that been? Uh, 
Let me see a little bit over four or five. Even my, the, see right here? That, that little decay right here, a little uh -huh. groove. I've been going up for four or five years. So and you haven't been able to grip down. No, I played middle linebacker. I was like, I'll get him, right? I, feel I couldn't you. get him I, no more. I, I believe I can get him again. <laughs> you know, I was supposed to go play pro football for God. He told me I'm going to keep you. I'm going to reward you for even just serving me. So wow. I, I never was the guy to do drugs. A man alive. I just want to do it right. You know what I mean? So I need a refreshing. When she told me to come, from the time she told me I met her at the dealership, she told me everything God said, right? And I'm Who? like, oh, Leonda. Le okay. Okay, but this girl. Did the, I just want to know, did the Lord heal your hand? He touched me. Listen, I got okay. my grip Okay, thank back. God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. That's wonderful. You got any more? You think there's more? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling you should write a book. <laughs> yeah, best hat, best hat. Yes. You have a, In the building. You have a powerful preacher. Any more hands? Yeah, if there's hands or feet, that's the language of the Spirit. Right there. If you have an issue with your hands or feet, I want you to stand right now. I think hands there's or one feet. there too. Another miracle with hands or feet? Another one. Okay, another one up the back. Now, I want that, that woman, where was she? This girl, I felt this, the Spirit of the Lord on you. Could you come up and pray for these people? Just a quick prayer and just release the power of God. This was the language of the Lord that there was five or six now people healed of feet and hand issues. Just have her pray from there. Yeah, she can just pray from there. Grab the mic there. And you hold it, Ryan. Just release healing over anyone with hands. If you have hand or feet problems, please stand right now. Put your hands around them, guys. We know what to do. Just put your hands on them real quick. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that you're a God who wants to heal. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, and we thank you for your presence that's moving even now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke any and all hand and foot pain. I call forth healing in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of infirmity to leave this Amen. building right now in the name of Jesus. I call a continual and perpetual stream of destructive holy fire of the Lord Amen. down upon any and all replacement spirits of infirmity that would try to reattach themselves to any individual in this house. I call forth freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. My Father, my God, you are faithful, Lord. You are Amen. faithful, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Go ahead and test it out. If you receive, Hold on, don't sit down. If you receive prayer, remain standing. Go ahead and test it out. Go ahead and test it out. When you feel the Lord's healed, you start waving at Ben and I or Ryan. Just start letting us know. Thank you, Father. Yeah, anyone? Any breakthrough? Any, any, any breakthrough? You've yes, got one there? Woman Thank here. you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I want to hear that one. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, I said it's better because um, it was always, you know, pain right in here when I would lift it, but it's better, a lot better. Thank, Thank you, you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone else in the room who feels the Lord? Oh, wow. We got one right here. What's your name? Jared. Where are you from? Uh, Plano, Texas. Plano? <coughs> yes, sir. Near Frisco. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes, sir. Nice little town center up there. <laughs> it's growing, yes. Yeah, very good place up there. That's why we moved there. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I was born with... What are you doing here? I'm just... Here for the, the Lord, you guys. Everybody. You came to be in the room tonight? Yes. Thank you, Father. Yes. Guys, isn't that beautiful? It's wonderful. Now, <laughs> now what, what happened? Well, so I was born with a clubbed foot. Um, oh, wow. Where I had, I've had surgeries throughout my life. Um, always had struggle. I played sports. I did everything. But I've always had struggle where pain in my feet. And uh, my, my family wanted to go to Disney World, and it's always a pain in the, in the dude, feet dude. for me. I'm and so I, up and down tonight, all night long, I've been standing, sitting, standing, sitting, worshiping all the same. And the pain's just gone. Well, when, when, when did the pain leave? Just now? Just now? As we were praying. As Praise we were God. Praying. Is there anyone else? I want to take one more. Right here, up front, Olga. Ryan, high knee. Let me see how quick you are. Go. Cut, cut, cut. Go. Yes, Ryan. Nice, nice. He's getting good, Carla. So Olga, what happened? 
Um, so my feet were just hurting because, you know, serving and everything. Um, but as soon as she was sharing her testimony, my f like the pain in my feet just started leaving. And wow. that's it. Yeah, the Lord healed me. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. All right, let's all stand up. Let's all stand to our feet. Can we lift our hands in the presence of the Lord? Come on. Every eye closed. Come on, just give him your attention. Lord, we thank you. What an amazing weekend with you. Thank you for your kindness. I pray that you would literally cover your people and your presence. And we pray that you would trust us here with a greater measure of your presence. Find a home with us. Now I declare a blessing over everyone here. That you would walk in the blessing and goodness of the Lord. That you would not walk in the land of barrenness, but you would walk by the river in a fruitful land, in the land of his blessing, the land of his beauty. Be blessed in Jesus' name. I pray sweet, wonderful fellowship over you. I pray in Jesus' name that he would speak to you in the night and visions and dreams would open, that he would reveal himself to you, that the scriptures would become your food, and that his presence would be your everything. In Jesus' name, amen. If those of you who are here Sunday morning, how many of you were there Sunday morning? I'm going to say something to you now, and you'll know what to say. Christ is risen. Now the rest of you know what to say. Christ is risen. Say it out loud. Christ is, Christ is risen. One more time. Christ is risen. Is risen. Now give the Lord praise. All right. If, if, if you need prayer tonight, I know many of you came in from out of town. We want to honor that. I need our prayer team to come forward, please. Make sure you have somebody next to you to assist you. Our prayer team is ready to serve you and pray for you. You will line up down the center aisle and our ushers will direct you. God bless you. See you Sunday morning. Bye bye. God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engle that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus' image. And that word began to burn in us and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word. And a church was birthed in that same worshiping 
atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers, for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are going to be coming. They're going to be teaching instruments. They're going to be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us. We worship for Him. So we want to invite you to come. Come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it after Bethany, that wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to, that place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School, has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, your dancing gifts, and give them to Jesus. If Jesus would make this a Bethany, that he'd make our lives a Bethany, where he'd come and rest and recline among us. You were created to experience the presence of God in a way that will transform your life, family, and the world. We understand how difficult it can be to find time to attend a school where you study the Word of God, grow in your faith, and build a community of believers. And that's why we created Jesus School Online. We believe that the Holy Spirit is unlimited in His reach. No matter where you live or what stage of life you're in, we invite you to take part in this amazing online opportunity. You'll be led by world-renowned speakers and worship leaders. You will be taught to seek Jesus daily, be activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to share the gospel, and build community with Jesus people from around the world. At Jesus School Online, we are passionate about seeing a Jesus people raised up to shake the nations for the glory of God. You were created for this moment in history. The Jesus people are emerging and we have one ambition. Jesus himself. Will you join us?